Welcome to Good Shepherd Center. I'm Katrina Knight, the Executive Director, and we're gonna take a quick tour of our facility here on Martin Street. So first we have our tiny little medical clinic. It's this main room, and then we actually have a, a separate room where uh, when we have a volunteer physician, let's say, someone can be being examined in one room while our health department nurse meets with others individually about their chronic health conditions, about their individual education they might need around a medication that they're taking, um, lots of chronic condition diagnosis and follow-up, trying to help our homeless get, guests get back on a path for, for good health and, and to stay there. Um, it's been so helpful to have our clinic co-located with our shelter and our soup kitchen so that we don't have to rely on folks to remember to come back to us or find us at a separate location. We just organically run into them because they're already at the shelter or they might be coming for a meal. And so it's a ready-made opportunity for our nurse to follow up with folks to, to check their blood sugar levels, to check with them about whether they've been able to stay on their medication or need a refill and those kinds of things. We're also preventing a lot of unnecessary trips to the emergency room, which we think is a real benefit to all of us in the community. So we'll come this way. This is where the night shelter begins. We have two case managers and housing specialists who work off of this wing. And then this is where the men's dorms begin. We have two dorms for single gentlemen. Altogether, they could sleep as many as 60 men in an evening. It looks a little bare bones during the day because we ask our folks to strip the beds in the morning. We try to launder everything every day to keep colds and, and other kinds of infectious things to a minimum. Uh, anymore, we haven't been sleeping quite as many people, not just because of COVID, but because several years ago, we really made a very intentional change in direction to be a very housing focused organization. And so uh, unless, for example, we have a hurricane blow through, we no longer have a need to shelter 100 or 120 adults and children at any one time. Instead, more the norm might be 30 or 40 gentlemen, not 60 or more between the two dorms. A second dorm here for a single gentleman. We have a cozy little hangout space here. We often use this, for example, if we have a single dad and his child or children. It's just a cozy, separate little space where they can watch cartoons together, they can read a book, they can do homework, uh, and still be separated from um, the rest of the crowd and just kind of have some private space together. We're entering our family shelter. We designed Good Shepherd Shelter with separate space for our families with children. So we have four private rooms where families with children stay together as a unit. And so the idea is it's a modest amount of space, uh, but each individual family, they don't have to take their personal belongings with them each day um, to their car, to their workplace, or what have you. They can come back to the same room every night. Um, it's kind of like their own little nest to make their own. Uh, plenty of space for a family even of six. We have rollaway cribs for infants. Um, and then with extra beds, that's usually where the stuffed animals live or the school supplies and those kinds of things for storage. Our families share uh, a restroom so that the, the children in particular are not having to use the restrooms that our single folks use um, out off of our day shelter. Let's take a look at another family room. Okay, and you'll see a very lived in family room here. Uh, the extra beds, space for toys and organization. It's just sort of a, a modest little homey space where um, that parent or parents and children can stay together and kind of have their own little space within the larger shelter. We have found that if moms in particular don't feel like it's gonna be a safe and nurturing space, they're hesitant to come to shelter with their children. And so we work really hard to make it a very supportive place, especially for the children. We're about to enter our family lounge. It's 
space was really at a premium when Good Shepherd uh, built this building in two phases, and yet we felt like it was really important to have a dedicated space where parents and their children could spend time together after school, doing homework. We have tutors from UNCW come in um, to spend enrichment time with the children. And even during the day, we might have a mom and an infant who need a safe place to, to be in between appointments, um, in between childcare and, and other kinds of responsibilities. So this has proved to be uh, a, tough, um, a tough loved space in terms of, um, you know, our kids can be a little tough on it, but, um, it's uh, it's been it has worked to be that safe, nurturing kind of separate space, and we even find that the children tend to form friendships amongst each other as an additional kind of support, which is nice. Off of this room, uh, much like the gentlemen's dorms, we have one dorm for single ladies. It can sleep up to 28 at a time in bunk beds. Um, again, a modest sleep space and storage space for each lady. Ordinarily, our dorms are closed during the day, but if we have someone who's feeling under the weather or maybe they've worked third shift, we do allow them to come back and, and lie down for a period of time. Everyone else is expected to get up in the morning and get showered, go to breakfast, and kind of get their, their day started. And uh, more and more, our sort of working refrain around here is that if we're not talking about housing, we're having the wrong conversation. So the idea is to no matter how down someone might be feeling to really encourage each other and to really be asking those questions of, okay, what am I gonna do today that gets me a step closer to getting back to my own place? So we are approaching our laundry room here. So we've got two commercial washers and two commercial dryers. Um, pretty expensive equipment, but um, very much needed when it comes to um, keeping such a large group of individuals, you know, safe and healthy every night of the year. Because we do shelter adults and children every single night of the year, whether it's a weekend or a holiday, no matter, Good Shepherd is operational and ready to receive those folks. So in the morning, it's a mountain of laundry, and the laundry and the clothing closet here are two of our key areas where our guests themselves really pitch in and frankly run the whole thing, <laughs> I mean beginning to end. So when we get donations of clothing or toiletries, they come here. Our guests take turns um, helping out, which is just a huge help. Um, they're working in the laundry room, they're working in the clothing closet, organizing things, laundering the clothing that comes in. and then. Both during the day and the evening, uh, our homeless guests can line up here. They can ask for a clean set of clothes, a razor, shampoo, uh, lotion, all the kinds of things that you might use at home when you're ready to get cleaned up. They can access here and then go to uh, the, the ladies' or the men's restroom to, to take their shower and get cleaned up. At night, most folks don't realize this, but there's a very large roll-down door that comes down and that completes the separation of the ladies from the gentlemen at night. So our ladies can come down the hallway in their pajamas and access their restroom without encountering the gentlemen and vice versa. We have some offices here that our uh, shelter staff use and our case management staff. More and more, the two kind of overlap with each other where again, we, we wanna meet people's immediate needs but we also wanna be talking with them from day one about how we can work together to help them realize that transition back to housing again. So just behind me is our day shelter. We've had that probably going on 30 years now. Uh, it's meant to be that safe space that homeless folks can rely on when they don't have the kinds of things that we take for granted when we do have housing. So it's access to restrooms, access to uh, mail. You know, we are people's address. We help them reestablish their identification, for example. It's very hard to go apply for a job or assistance if you don't have your social security card anymore or you don't have your driver's license or a photo ID. So starting with some of those basics. Um, beyond that, it's a safe place to be. Many, many, the majority of people who are homeless, they do have work to go to during the day. They're working people or they have school to go to. But that smaller group that maybe is struggling uh, with one or more disabling conditions uh, or they're, they're 
brand new to homelessness and just don't even know where to begin, those folks need a safe place to be during the day where their immediate needs are met and where skilled folks can work with them to help them uh, realize that, okay, for the short term, they don't have to worry about where their food is going to come from or their clothing, where they're going to sleep. And so to take that burden off of them so that we can begin to work with them on their plan for becoming rehoused again. And so that's uh, there are much larger communities that have all kinds of night shelter, but nowhere for folks to be during the day. And so that's been a source of pride for us as well. So now we've entered our soup kitchen space. Uh, many of you know that that's actually how Get Shepherd started. We were a modest little soup kitchen well over 30 years ago. And, and though we've grown, we still have that soup kitchen. It just looks a little bit different. So today it's an actual commercial kitchen that we're really fortunate to have. You might see it looks a lot like an elementary school cafeteria in some ways, uh, but we do have Convection ovens, we're able to have lots of the larger pots on the stove at any one time. Um, ordinarily for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we might have volunteers and staff here, uh, and they're serving our guests as they come through the line. Um, our goal, particularly for lunch, for example, would be a meat, a starch, a cooked vegetable, vegetable salad, fruit salad, and then, yes, dessert at the end. So really substantial and is well-balanced as we can make it from the items that have been donated to us and that our volunteers are so skilled at pulling together into not just a healthy meal, but a meal that you would enjoy having and that our guests also really enjoy. So it's that added comfort to them as well. Again, fortunate to have sort of built on our early days. We are now fortunate to have a walk-in cooler and freezer here off of the kitchen and so we can store food until we need it. Particularly with things like uh, meat, that's very helpful. This is the pantry that we pull from. So when, when children or school groups or offices band together to collect food from, uh, for us, this is typically where it's coming. And so our volunteers and our staff pull from this when they're trying to plan a meal. Uh, in non-COVID times, we might have 250 people from the community come for lunch in one hour. That's a lot of potatoes to peel. That's a lot of pasta to cook. And so if folks can come here and pull from the donations that you have made, it just makes that process a lot easier. This is our second helpings area, uh, also on the food side. When I first visited Good Shepherd, this was one of two programs that really stood out to me. Uh, the other being the day shelter because I think in any community you see so much food thrown away that people wish could be directed to folks who are hungry and really need it and so I was so impressed that here this little organization here in Wilmington had kind of figured out uh, a mechanism for salvaging literally tons of food every year uh, and for many years now in excess of 500 tons of year has been rescued largely through the efforts of our volunteers who uh, they come in here, they may grab some plastic bins, they go out to any number of different grocery stores. This is kind of the scheme for the week of who's going where. Uh, they go to our different partners out in the community, uh, like Trader Joe's, for example, and collect from them food that they have agreed to set aside for us. And so we bring it back in here. It's weighed. Every donation to Good Shepherd is, is captured in one way or another. Uh, we weigh it so we have an accounting of that. Our volunteers sort through it, and that includes many of our homeless guests pitching in back here. They make sure it's usable. Uh, of course, a lot of it we would use in our soup kitchen, but the majority of the food that we are salvaging through this effort actually goes to partners out in the community, like Mother Hubbard's Cupboard, like Nourish NC. Um, and our thinking is they may not have the capacity, the, the vans, the volunteers, the, the program, if you will, to go out and rescue that much food, but they have a need for it. And we don't have to meet that hungry child or that hungry senior to feel like if we, through those partners, can get food to those who need it, that's still making our mission happen. And so we do share the majority of it with others. 
Uh, we, we store it here in this cooler and then they come and pick it up from us, usually on a weekly basis. So we we're happy about that little effort that all told over the year rescues an awful lot of food and gets it to the people who, who really need it. I always like showing off one of our <laughs> facilities offices because uh, in addition to being sort of a great example of keeping everything under the sun um, organized that we might need in terms of our vehicle fleet or our three different properties, uh, I also love showing off, you know, there's uh, no small effort goes into trying to keep our, our guests, our volunteers, our properties secure. So the different cameras that you might have seen, both interior and exterior, on our property. You have to have a pretty involved system for uh, storing all of that, backing all of that up. Um, it is helpful when we, when we do have an incident where someone's lost their glasses and we can't figure out where they've gone to and they've fallen behind the front desk or what have you. Um, or, goodness forbid, someone has stolen one of our guest bicycles or what have you. We're able to come here and it's a little bit tedious, but, but back it up to a point where we can figure out, oh, okay, you know, the glasses have fallen behind, or yes, the bike is gone, we're gonna get a new bike, you know, those those kinds of things. But this is this is just part of our investment in trying to improve what we do and offer um, a secure and supportive and nurturing space for people in their time of crisis.